Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome. Today we are continuing with our core concepts for med surge nursing series. This is video number three. Previously, we have talked about fluid and electrolyte balance and acid base balance. And I will link those videos in the description box below if you miss them. Today, however, we are going to be talking about nutrition. So just to keep in mind that this series is really a back to the basics series where we are really trying to understand what is happening in the body so that we can better assess, diagnose, and care for clients with acute and chronic conditions. So when we think about nutrition, the process um, of nutrition is ingesting foods and then our body using those foods and fluids to grow, repair, and maintain optimal body function. So those nutrients, as we eat them, they travel through our GI tract. When they hit the small intestine, they are then transferred into the bloodstream. And from the bloodstream, they can be used for cellular metabolism and then overall health promotion. Now we do know that there are five types of nutrients. There are carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Those are what we call our energy nutrients. Now we know that our body craves and functions best when carbohydrates are used for energy, but we do know that fats and proteins can also be used for energy. And then also vitamins and minerals. Now vitamin and vitamins and minerals are essential because without them, our body can't convert those carbs, fats, and proteins into energy. Nutrients are also classified as essential or non-essential. So essential nutrients are those nutrients that we have to eat them in order to get them in our body. So they're supplied in the food by our diet. Non-essential nutrients, on the other hand, are those that our body can make in sufficient quantities. And there are some amino acids that our body can make. And when we think about vitamins, we specifically think about vitamin D. We know that if we get enough sunlight, that our body can manufacture vitamin D. Foods are also categorized um, into food groups, and these are known as the five food groups, dairy, grains, vegetables, fruits, and proteins. Now, way back a long time ago, we used to call the five food groups the food pyramid, but now we call it my plate, which is the visual depiction that you see on the screen. Um, my plate also has a website, myplate.gov, and this is a USDA sponsored website. It is for clients, although as healthcare providers, we can glean a lot of information about nutrients from this website, but it is based on current dietary guidelines, and it does use all five of the food groups in the teaching platform. The goal of my plate is to support healthy eating for everyone in the United States by focusing on variety and the correct amounts of nutrients, by choosing foods and beverages that are low in saturated fat, low in sodium, low in added sugars, and then also helping clients to make those lifestyle changes that do build healthier eating habits. And all of this is really the basis for nutrition as it relates to health promotion. Now, sometimes you'll hear us use the word optimal nutrition status. And all that means is that the client that you're caring for has adequate nutrients in their body for optimal body functioning. But unfortunately, a lot of the clients that we care for do have decreased or poor nutritional status. And that can be for a variety of reasons. It can be due to lack of available nutrients, whether they don't have them in their diet or they can't afford to purchase them, or maybe they have just an inadequate use of nutrients. So maybe they have a malabsorption disorder. So their body can't, that they're consuming the nutrients, but then their body can't use them appropriately. So malnutrition is a general term that we use um, for clients who particularly are underweight or overweight. So in your mind, you're thinking, wait, how can somebody who's overweight or obese be malnourished? Well, when you're overweight or obese, you're getting too much probably of fats and carbohydrates and probably not enough of vitamins and minerals um, and all the, the different five food groups. Same thing with clients who are underweight. Um, although some clients do have a generalized nutrition, many others do have just a specific nutrient deficiency, such as iron deficiency anemia, or um, they have bone demineralization because of a lack of calcium and vitamin D in their diet. 
Now, when we think about this core concept, there are some interrelated concepts, one of which we've already talked about in this series, which is fluid and electrolyte balance. And then later on, we will talk about another interrelated concept, which is elimination. So what are the risk factors for inadequate or decreased nutrition? So um, the highest risk for malnutrition is going to be in our older adults. That is gonna be a result of acute or chronic diseases in which they are suffering from, could also be related to poor oral health and then also social isolation. Clients who are obese also um, are struggling with inadequate or decreased nutrition. We do know that obesity um, is a precursor to diabetes mellitus type 2 and is a component of metabolic syndrome. Now, some clients might have the lack of money to purchase healthy foods. Um, that puts them at a significant risk for decreased nutrition. Clients who uh, have substance abuse disorders, uh, disorders such as anorexia and bulimia nervosa, clients who have a high stress level, those that follow fad diets, thyroid disorders, of course, clients that have GI distress or GI disorders, and then those that have chronic diseases such as COPD and cancer can also struggle to get adequate nutrition. Okay, so by now, hopefully you've all been exposed to the body mass index and you um, at least know how to interpret it. So we do know that underweight is gonna be any client with a BMI less than 18 and a half, normal BMI 18 and a half to 24.9, overweight 25 to 29.9, obese starting at a 30 BMI. Now there are classes of BMI. We do know that a class one is going to be 30 to 34.9, a class two is gonna be 35 to 39.9, and a class three is gonna be a 40 plus BMI. And we do tend to consider clients uh, morbidly obese or extremely obese when their BMI is greater than 35. What are the physiologic consequences of altered nutrition? So altered nutrition uh, or the physiologic consequences will depend on whether the tissue, the issue, sorry, is generalized or whether the client is lacking a specific nutrient. So obviously um, a lack of a specific nutrient might be easier to overcome than a client who is suffering from generalized nutrition. So we do know that that great example that I already used is clients whose diets are lacking in calcium and vitamin D. That often leads, especially as we age, to bone demineralization and osteoporosis. Now, as far as nutritional assessment, height, weight, and then calculating a BMI is really important. Also looking at skin, hair, and nails. We do know that um, inadequate or malnutrition will um, cause definite alterations in the skin, hair, and nails. When we think about laboratory testing, the serum prealbumin is a really good indicator of generalized or overall nutrition. Um, a normal a serum prealbumin should be 15 to 36 milligrams per deciliter. And the reason we like prealbumin over albumin is because prealbumin um, reflects those acute changes. So you'll see those changes faster in the prealbumin than you will in the albumin. And then of course we can do laboratory testing for specific deficiencies such as a potassium deficiency or a sodium deficiency or a calcium deficiency. Now, our interventions, of course, are going to depend on the type of deficit that's present. So sometimes clients need high protein supplements, oral supplements, but sometimes they need in a generalized malnutrition, maybe they need enteral feeding or maybe they need parenteral nutrition. It's really important when we are um, uh, implementing plans of care for clients that are suffering from malnutrition, that we are weighing those clients at least weekly. We might be weighing them daily if they're in the hospital, but that we're weighing them at least weekly using the same scale, wearing the same type of clothing, and preferably before breakfast. Now, as far as health promotion, we do want to be teaching clients how to live that healthy lifestyle that's going to include regular exercise and getting adequate essential nutrition, uh, nutrients. We want to promote nutrition that maintains a BMI in that healthy, normal range, so between 18.5 and 24.9. 
And then we do want to teach clients to avoid high calorie foods, um, especially uh, when there's a lot of added sugar that's creating to that higher calorie. And then foods that are high in fat, particularly saturated fat. We do know that we want um, uh, our daily caloric intake to contain less than 10% of saturated fat. That is a generalized overview of the core concept of nutrition. Now, if you want to learn a little bit more about nutrition and specifically do a deep dive into those five food groups and what foods contribute to each food group, I do have a study guide available in my Etsy shop. I will leave the um, the link to that um, study guide in the comments below. Of course, if you have any comments or you would like to contact me, you can do so via my email, leaving a comment in, uh, in the, um, on this video, or you can reach out to me on my Twitter account. Um, have a wonderful day.